Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is navigation in focus or basically a great and more efficient way of setting up a navigation system especially for a larger map. So what we're going to be covering today is how to set it up and what it is as well. So you'll notice I've pressed P to show where the navigation can go and it's only in this radius around the player. So if an AI is this close to the player they will be able to move. If they're not around the player, they won't be able to move. And as the player moves, this is also going to update in real time as well, so the AI will be able to move in different areas around the player too, as the player is moving, and you notice as I get further away, they can't do it, and as I get closer to other ones, they can perfectly, like so. If I try to move all the way over here, you notice we now have it here, like so. And again, this is much more efficient, so instead of having the whole map rendering navigation and being able to move at once, it means only this small area around the player, which we can make as big or as small as we want, is the only place the navigation will be rendered and processed, which is a lot better on your CPU. So especially if you don't have a great PC or your players don't have a great PC, this is amazing for what you want to do. So let me also hit play to showcase this better off as well. So if I hit play here, I've got the camera all the way up here just to showcase it a bit better. But you'll notice the AI in the middle is moving, the two on the outside aren't moving. If I had to continue walking to the right, the AI in the middle will stop moving and the AI on the right will be able to move. As you can see, that stopped, this one has started. And if I had to then move all the way back over here, he'll stop moving, the middle will start, and I continue going, the middle will stop and the left will start. As you can see, it all working perfectly like this. So this is what we're setting up today and I've made this very small just for the purpose of this video because I've got a small map, I want to be able to showcase it for you all. But again, this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is actually incredibly easy to set up and to customize. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change some of our project settings. So we're gonna to go to edit, project settings. On the left, we're gonna scroll down until we find navigation mesh and we're gonna change two things in here. Firstly, we want to scroll down until we find runtime generation and that is under runtime. So you can also just search for it up at the top runtime generation and we want to change it from static to dynamic which obviously means we'll be able to generate navigation mesh at runtime dynamically. The next thing we want to change is if we search for invoker we can change generate navigation only around navigation invokers and we're going to tick that so it's true. So again the AI can only move around this certain location of the invoker and it doesn't just have to be the player you can, for example, maybe just put them around each AI or around certain locations, so certain actors, maybe a tower or anything along those lines. Really, you can customize it for what you want, but in my example, it's the player. So once we've done that, we can close it. That's all we need to do, and we don't need to restart the engine. So we've now changed our project settings to be what we want. What we need to do now is make sure that we do still have a nav mesh bounds in our level. So I imagine you probably do, but if you don't, you can go to add in the top left and it's in a different place on UE4. Then we want to go to volumes and just simply add a nav mesh bounds volume, scaling this up to be the size of your map. And if we depress P, it would have gone green everywhere, but obviously because we've now just changed those project settings, it's not gonna show P anywhere as we don't have any invokers placed in the level yet, but we just wanna make sure we do have it covering everywhere we want to have navigation. So even if your invoker is outside of the nav mesh bounds, it's not going to work because it still needs this bounds to be able to process it in the same area. So I hope that makes sense. Then what we want to do is open up our player blueprint or our AI or the actor, basically where you want the invoker to be. So again, for me, that is the player. So I'm gonna open up the BP third person character here. Inside of your actor, what you want to do is add a component, adding navigation invoker like so, very, very simple. We can compile and save that, and that is now it working perfectly, but you can obviously change some of these settings. So we can change the tile generation radius and a tile removal radius. So what this basically means is in a 3000 unit radius around a player is where the AI can walk, or where the navigation is going to be. So that's the generation radius. It will generate tiles in a 3000 unit radius. And tile removal radius basically means once the tile is 5,000 units away from the player or the invoker, that is when it's going to be removed. So as it's moving along, because this is 3,000 and 5,000, as the invoker is moving, there will still be more behind than there is in front, 
as it's not removed just yet. But you can set these as the same if you wanted, but that's the difference. It's the difference between the location for spawning in and the location for removing. So just because of the size of this map for, for me to want to showcase this to you, I'm going to set that to 1000 and 2000 respectively. So 1000 generation, 2000 removal, just to again show it working. We can compile, save, close that, and that is now the code working perfectly for us. Now if you have a bit of an error, what it might be is the AI is trying to move before the invoker has spawned in. So what you can do is open up your AI, and what I've done is just on my random roam code, off of on fail, I've then just got a short delay and then try it again. You can keep that or you can just do a short delay off of begin play before doing your random roam just to again have it try once the invoker has actually spawned in. So we're going to close this and then let's just hit play to test this out. So we'll notice the AI in the middle is moving, the one on the left and the right isn't. If I had to go all the way to the left, the one in the middle will stop moving and the one on the left will move instead as you can see perfectly there. And if I have to go all the way to the right, the same thing will happen. Left will stop moving, middle will move, middle will stop moving, right will move. As I'm just going along my map, the invoker is changing location with a navigation mesh updating dynamically around it as well. Perfectly like that. And then I'll show you the bit from the beginning as well with the character blueprint in, just me dragging it around. So I've pressed P, I can see the green area, again in a 1000 unit radius. And if I to move it, we now have it spawning 1000 unit here and again there's a bit at the back because of the 2000 unit radius of deleting it. So if I have to move forward more, that's still there, go forward more, that's been deleted, this has been generated once again, perfectly like so. So in this location both of them would be able to move, move it over here, we get something along these lines. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a navigation invoker system which again allows us to have AI only moving in a certain radius around the invoker which in my example is the player which again just makes your game run a lot smoother and you need less processing power to be able to have large navigation on larger maps. Obviously this works on any size map but this is really useful for those larger maps. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.